Welcome back to episode 150 of the Bionicle Inspiration Series, and today I'm feeling a little bit like the Toa Nuba. I'm the same as I always was, you know, back and ready for business, but now I got this fancy cool silver armor. And, you know, I got a new mask and looking pretty cool. And that's a little bit like we got today because it's episode 150. I wanted to celebrate a little bit because, uh, hey, 150 episodes. That's really exciting. Uh, and we made a little, a uh, couple of few aesthetic changes. So, uh, hey, if you like them, let me know. You can do so through the social media that is in the description below because, unfortunately, you can't comment anymore. Thanks, Copa. That's your fault. Anyway, let's explore today's episode, which is, of course, on fan-submitted mocks. Every 10th episode, I do a fan-submitted mocks episode, which some people sometimes go like, oh, I have to put my submitted mock in the fan-submitted mocks episode. No, that's not true. You can put a fan-submitted mock in any episode. I just make sure to do every 10th episode a fan-submitted mocks episode so that there's just a whole bunch of them in one episode. And it's a nice way to kind of churn through a few more because I have so many, it's hard to work through every single one of them, but I do my best to. Regardless, though... Let's dive on in and talk about those fan submitted mocks. The first one today is by Iggs, and it's called Unit G44-Y4. What I love so much about this is that it has this kind of uncertain head design to it. You know, to some degree you could argue, well, it's probably kind of where the purple Onowa mask is and where that horn is, and I don't disagree with you, but, you know, you look at it and you go like, well, where exactly are the eyes then? You know, there's no sort of, like, translucent red thing to symbolize this is where the eyes are or anything like that. It's a little uncertain and I like that you know when you're building something even it's even the case for certain spaceships you know you take a look at the majority of like Star Wars ships you can kind of always tell where the spaceship is but there's some other various spaceships and things and other forms of pop culture where you don't know where exactly the cockpit of the ship is and of course if you look in those you know reference and cross-reference books and all those things it'll tell you if you have a deeper look at it and stuff you know but I do also kind of like this idea of, you know, whether it's a spaceship or a robot, there's a little bit of an uncertain head design. There's no specific area that says where it is. And, hey, maybe that's a cool thing. Maybe you're someone who just struggles with a good head design on a bionicle. Well, maybe you can build more of a robotic look where the head design is a little more implemented into the body like this. It doesn't. There's not necessarily a neck to the mark, or it doesn't really jut out above the body. It is just a part of the body, and there's no real area signifying where the, the eyes or the head is. It's just a different aesthetic. It's something you could at least think about. I think it's cool. I think it's unique on this mark. Speaking of that rough head area, I really like that he's used the Onowa mask here uh, just as some a little additional detailing and stuff. And, and the fact that there's some different connections in there. We see some white claw pieces being used in the bottom of the Onowa mask, and we see a tube being fed through the eyes on the Onowa mask there. It's interesting to note that there are a whole bunch of different connection points you can use on that mask. Um, and you can like this. You don't have to use it as a mask. You can use it as uh, body armor or just another part of the mock. And uh, some of those earlier masks had little things like that where it's not necessarily legal, but you could slide a few pieces into different areas of it. So uh, something to think about as well if you're playing with some of those earlier masks or even some of the newer masks, you know. Put some pieces in some different places and see if they fit, see if it uh, works legally or illegally, of course. And uh, find the different connection points that could exist there. Love the color scheme on this mock too. Black, purple, white. Beautiful. So love the gun design and the sword here. Very nice. Really nice sort of little mecha robot look to this guy. Very, very cool. Nicely done, X. Really like your work. On to the next one. This is Deleron the Fierce. And it is by Toa Radix. Or Rad Rix. Something like that. If you've watched all 150 episodes, or even just 50, or even just one of them, you probably know by now. We don't pronounce names correctly here. And it's not a choice. It's just the way it is, because names are hard. Anyway. This mock uses a really cool mask that's not typically a bionicle mask, but it is to some degree a construction mask. This comes from one of the older Knight's Kingdom sets, and it is Vladik's mask. And this mask came in a couple different colors. I want to say dark red, black, and uh, this sort of more kind of, not quite gunmetal, but this sort of more rough and gruff uh, color here, which I don't know the exact name of that color, but it's a cool color nonetheless. Um, so it's a mask that exists in a whole bunch of different colors and, and uh, sort of thing, and uh, all of those Knights Kingdom masks were pretty cool, and you know they don't necessarily that you know easily fit onto a you know a typical bionicle head. They're a little bit like the G2 heads. They're kind of slotted on, if I remember correctly. It's been ages since I played with uh, some uh, Knights Kingdom stuff, so hey, maybe I'm entirely wrong and I'm misremembering there. But regardless, Knights Kingdom had some cool pieces. Whether it's the Knights Kingdom armor parts that you could use on bionicles that we see all the time being used on uh, things here on the show. 
Uh, but never forget those masks as well, especially this Vladik mask. Really imposing, evil-looking mask. He was the main evil bad guy in that series, of course, so uh, really, really nicely done. Really cool aesthetic. Looks fantastic. Use some Knight's Kingdom masks, man. Speaking of using things here, too. This mask uses uh, a cape piece, but to my knowledge, this is a Chima cape piece because there's a little bit of that, uh, you know, it has that tattered texture to it, but it is a little bit different to the Vizon cape, which also had that tattered look to it. Always cool to note that, hey, those Chima sets, they came with some pretty cool capes. At least a couple of them did, you know? Sometimes those Chima sets were simply not released in parts of the world. I want to say they were only released in, like, not Denmark, but, like, Finland or something. I, I could be wrong here, but they had a little bit more of a limited release. So um, if you didn't end up picking any up, it might be something to look uh, you know, look on the internet for. You know, there's uh, a whole bunch of them. Great pieces in them, you know? I mean, heck, look at the torso here. It also uses one of those cool Chima torso pieces that you could insert a Zamosphere into the middle. So it kind of looked like this cool, like, arc reactor heart light thing. And there's so many different Zamospheres as well. You could put any of the Zamospheres in there. And I like what this one's doing of using a Zamosphere that's the same color as the torso. So it sort of actually looks a little bit more like just ornate detailing. It just looks like it's got a very nice pattern on the chest there. Um, looks less like there's an actual orb in the chest and more just uh, more a part of the armor. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's a nice way of using that, you know. So never forget those pieces, man. There, there's some, some cool pieces and some cool sets that uh, you may not have picked up. I also like that this monk uses one of those Hero Factory shield pieces. I feel like that's kind of an underrated piece in all honesty. Uh, it's a great part. I loved when those... Um, Hero Factory sets did come with some of those shield parts, because uh, it's cool. Shields are great. I love a good shield. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't see it too much these days used in some mocks. So, really nice to see it being used here. Uh, yeah, an underrated piece, for sure. Regardless, though, really awesome, imposing nightlight character here. Uh, great color scheme. Very much uh, conveys this more sinister look. And little pops of red, too, also help with that. It's very nice. Um, really, really cool, uh, cool work here. Nicely done. On to the next mock here. This is Kaharani the Mad Titan by Spartan1138. I'm sure the name takes a little bit of inspiration from it, but then again, so does the head. The head design on this mock is very similar to the Lego set uh, Kazani. Kaz I, I, want I keep wanting to say Calzoni, but I think I'm thinking of Calzones. It's probably because I'm hungry. Might have something to do with it, but Kazani. I believe that's the way you pronounce it. Um, really, really cool set awesome lego set uh and it had a really unique head design you know we were talking before about using pieces that aren't used too commonly or that you know maybe pieces that you never really got to play with but they're really cool the kazani head's kind of similar to that man you know it's a really cool design using those um white baraki feet there uh but of course in the set they came in dark green uh but Instead, doing the exact same head design in white. Why not? Those parts exist. And worth uh, giving it a go and trying it. It's a cool head design. Why not use it again on another mock, you know? I've had all sorts of people say, hey, you know, I love repeating designs that I've done before. Sure, you could argue you've already done it, but it's nice to see the different ways that you could try it. Can you expand it and use it in a new way? So nothing wrong at all with uh, using Kazani's head there and um, changing the color putting it on a different body, seeing how it looks, seeing how you yourself can implement it and play around with it. I think it's a really cool idea. And it uh, looks fantastic here, for sure. As I love that he's used some of these Viking wings here. They have this beautiful kind of keto orange and dark green marble texture to them. Uh, looks fantastic. Those pieces are always so helpful. You know, wing designs can be tough, and there's all sorts of kind of pre-made wings that LEGO themselves have made. So use them to your advantage, and, you know, see if you can implement it into the color scheme. And, you know, like we see here, there's not a lot of that keto orange slightly uh, translucent orange that's on these wings here uh, that's used on this mock. In fact, the orange is a brand new color on those wings, but it kind of works. I don't know. It's just a little bit of a, an additional splash of color there. And I don't know, at least in my opinion, you know, the orange is close enough uh, to red there on the color spectrum that it kind of blends subtly, you know. Sure, I'm sure this mock could benefit from a little bit of orange thrown in there, but uh, it works, you know, it's nice. And Sometimes a little bit of, uh, you know, having lots of different colors on a mock. Yeah, sometimes it can work, sometimes it doesn't, but I think it works well here. But also white and dark red. That's also a pretty cool color scheme. I like that. It's like this picture here. Um, this mock had a bit of a backstory as well. I read a little bits of it. It was, uh, uh, all right, normally I don't read backstories. Let's read the backstory on the evil, on the, um, on the evil, on the email here. The evil email, apparently. It's not an evil email. It was a good email. So the backstory says, For a brief time, he was happy. He married a female tower of fire, and they had a child. But things were not meant to last. Slowly his mind cracked, and when his wife was accidentally killed by a rogue tower, his mind broke. 
he turned on everyone and everything, swearing revenge against all Toa, bringing him time and time again into conflict with his child. Dot, dot, dot. Dun, dun, dun. So I like this image too, kind of uh, represents that backstory, and that just kind of looks cool, you know? I just like the idea of doing that, doing a few glamour shots of the Toa as they vogue it up and just, you know... Here's my front-on look. Here's me from the side. Here's a close-up of my head. But then a little bit of a character shot like that, you know, whether it represents the story or it's just them goofing around and then something fun. Yeah, why not? I like the idea. And that works well here. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So nice mock. Nicely done, Spartan. On to the next one. And this is called Build Challenge Number 1, Smoothness. And this is by David Shazbo. Shazibo. Ho, ho, ho. Shazibo and Ho, Ho, Ho are not actually a part of his name. I just added that for dramatic effect. But... Hey, maybe you could consider a little bit of a name change there. You don't have to. Anyway, what I love about this is he was going on in the email about how he just wanted to try out building a toe that was very smooth and very human-like. Uh, and I love the idea of just doing that, just building some mocks, uh, you know, not for any specific purpose, but just to experiment and play and learn, you know. There might have been things in 150 episodes of this that you've gone, I like the sound of that. That's something I might want to play around with one day or implement in a, in a mock in future. Well, why not do that? Why not design a mock that's simply exploring one or two concepts? You know, like this. He's, the name of the mock was uh, Build Challenge Number 1, Smoothness. Well, what's Build Challenge Number 2? Maybe you want to play around with uh, system and bionicle blending, or you want to play around with some color blocking. So why not do that? Why not build a few mocks that simply focus on that, on that idea of how can you, you know, how can you yourself uh, expand a technique or a concept that maybe you're not too good at or you want to just see different ways you can take it? Why not design a mock specifically for that? I love I love that idea. It's a really great way of, uh, you know, expanding how you as a builder can uh, be building and to, to get better and, and also just for a bit of fun. It's a great idea. So this mock has a very, uh, you know, it's primarily black in the color scheme here, but the head design on this is, sure, it has a little bit of black to it, but there's also that splash of cute orange on there as well. I like that, you know? Sure, you could argue, hey, maybe the head design needs to be uh, totally black, but I also kind of like the idea that maybe this mock is wearing black armor, and, you know, underneath that they have the more cute orange uh, look uh, to, their, to, to their body, and I like the idea that, yeah, he's not wearing a helmet here, and so, you know, that showing. It's an interesting idea. It works well. Also cool, we spoke about Knight's Kingdom stuff before, a little bit of Knight's Kingdom armor pieces being used here on the upper legs, and they've got some pretty smooth textures. It flows in nicely with the rest of the CCBS on this mock, and it is a primarily CCBS heavy mock. A uh, little bits of Bionicle and a few other things thrown in there, of course, but interesting to note, if you do want to play around with smoothness, CCBS is your homie, and it's a place to go and a thing to look into. Speaking of things to look into, this mock is cool. But check out that tissue box in the background. Check out that plate of food. Look at those bananas. What a time to be alive. Nice work, David. On to the next one. This is by Joseph. And this is called... Well, the email didn't have a name. But he literally said, I'm back with this guy. Hope you like it. So I'm going to call it this guy. Because that's what I was told. So if it did have a name, oh, my apologies. But you didn't include it in email. What I like about this is the head design, using some of those system kind of cockpit pieces, you know, you've seen that piece before being used on little like micro scale jets and things like that, or yeah, it's been used as, yeah, cockpits and things. Uh, and so I like the idea that maybe this mock is slightly playing with scale, is that, you know, an eye design on a sort of, you know, typical normal sized mock, or is this like a very huge mock and that's like, that's a cockpit and you feel a little, you know, little dude inside the cockpit and this is like a huge, like, Pacific Rim style mech or something like that. Interesting thoughts. I like the, uh, you know, to some degree playing with scale. It could not be, and I'm just kind of projecting this myself on here, but it's an interesting idea regardless. Something else I like this is the playing with textures here. It's a very smooth mock. It's got a lot of um, CCBS pieces being used here, so there is that smoother texture, but it's juxtaposed in an interesting way with some more rougher textures. You know, you've got these wires here, which have that kind of rimmed texture to them, a few other tubes and things thrown in there like that. And some of these uh, pictures here, you can very easily see the kind of mesh of CCBS bone pieces here, which again kind of has that more rougher texture to them, uh, and is a very distinctly different texture to the more smooth armored look of the CCBS armor, which is uh, on other places on this mock. It's an interesting idea. It kind of reminds me of you know this is like a, a mecha or a robot of some kind that you know underneath has a very you know mechanical look but then you place some armor on top and maybe there's certain areas of this that aren't armored whether that's for you know a specific reason 
uh, in you know why this robot was built, or it's just that at the moment it's unarmored and it's still in some testing phases, that sort of thing. I like it. Interesting idea and uh, an interesting way of playing around with some of those pieces. Whether or not that was a deliberate choice is, yeah, to some degree irrelevant, but I like uh, I like what's uh, being played with here. I think it's really cool. I do like that it also has this sort of ape-like look to it, a uh, very different sort of more hunched, non-humanoid design there. Really, really cool. Definitely something to consider if you are building a mock. You know, do you want it to have a typical human look or do you want it to take inspiration from certain animals and the way they hold themselves and the way they walk? Interesting idea. So great work. On to the next one. This is by Lego Rebooted and is called Akarai. So this mock has some pretty sweet weapons. First off, really nice bow and arrow design here. Really nice design with the bows using those uh, feather pieces at the end there. Very clever. Uh, and then this kind of whole mishmash of other blades and system pieces and uh, Exaforce robot arms and stuff like that to make this more ornate looking bow design. Really cool. But then let's not forget this awesome sword and shield design here as well, which is just as beautiful. Uh, a very ornate shield design, a very ornate sword as well. Uh, again, using a lot of little pieces and uh, connecting them in certain ways. A few illegal techniques as well, you know, combining those um, uh, Exaforce robot hands into a circle like that. You know, technically that's an illegal technique, but who cares? It looks nice. Um, I love the fact that he's gone so ham on these weapons. Uh, always cool. You know, nothing wrong, of course, with uh, building a more simplistic weapon, but you know, doing something like this where it's very, very ornate, very detailed, even has multiple colors on it. That's cool. That's cool. And it really pops against the mock as well. And you know, if you're someone who loves weapons, you know, there's so many A-Files and T-Files and Y-Files out there who just love guns. And they're binacle. Got to have all the guns on them. Or there's people who are like, this one mock I've got, he's got 84 swords, a shield, a gun, and a hand grenade, and he's going to town. Like, great idea, you know? If that's something that floats your boat, if you want to put a whole bunch of weapons on your mock, why not go ham on them like this? And, uh... Make them detailed, ornate, and beautiful, and really schmick. Looks cool. Smock as well. Beautiful red color scheme. Again, his uh, body design is really reflecting his weapons here to some degree. He's uh, very detail-orientated. Not that sort of smoother look that you more typically see these days, but that's all right. That looks nice, and looks pretty cool here. I like the little chrome highlights here. Just a little pop of something else there. I think it's pretty cool. Overall, some cool stuff on this one. I like it a lot. Nice work. Lego rebooted. Next one here. This is by... Nevermore mocks, otherwise known as Lemonade over on the Discord server. This mock is called, I believe it's called Shogun. So what I love about this is it's a little more system heavy, but it's taking a lot of inspiration from pieces used in Ninjago sets. We can see the green Ninjago dragon. I believe there's also a few pieces from, what's the set called? Uh, Destiny's Bounty, the Lego movie boat set from Ninjago. And I think there's a few other things thrown in here and there, uh, but really, really cool. You know, I love the fact that you're, you know, taking pieces from a theme uh, like Ninjago and then uh, you're going for this more sort of Shogun look. Obviously, the two, you know, have strong influences in each other. Uh, so a great idea to do that. Use pieces that were designed to fit that aesthetic and put it into an aesthetic that you're designing for a mock that you're designing. Very clever. Great way of using some parts there. I like the idea of using those uh, green Ninjago mech dragon head pieces uh, as shoulder armor here. That looks really nice. Great use of that part. Really nice head design on this too. I love the those um, curved tile pieces, uh, how those are being used as a sort of beautiful head crest at the top of the head design here. Love it. I love too those, uh, those tread pieces there being used as that uh, sort of shogun uh, waist armor there. Really nicely done. But my favorite detail on this, I love the little system stand next to it. Just a uh, little sort of shrine or something. Um, just a little pop. Just a little extra thing here that does uh, a little more for the mock. Uh, it's cool. You know, you see a lot of stands these days that hold up the mock. You know, it's like I said with Patrick on a podcast. It's a great idea if you take him to a convention to put a little stand on them, decorate it a little bit, and have a little bit of atmosphere to the mock. But uh, why not have a stand that's separate to it? If the mock's perfectly fine at supporting itself, then maybe you could put a little stand next to it that uh, sets the mood, builds a little bit of an atmosphere or something. It's cool. I like it. This next mock is from... Well, that's a good question because it's... I'll, I'll read what the email said. Yo, Ben Cossey, hope you're having a wonderful day. I am. Thank you very much. Uh, he then says, I'm crazy person. So hopefully that's his name and he's not just like, oh, I've, I've been at the mental asylum. Again, this is my cousin's self mock. I don't know what he calls it, so just call it Orange Man. So this is Orange Man by Crazy Person's Cousin. 
Nice. So, cousin of crazy person, love what you've done. Cool head design on this one. I just like the idea of that, uh, an eye design being more of like a beam instead of the sort of two separate eyes, you know, like a clone trooper versus a stormtrooper. Gotta, gotta throw in my Star Wars reference in my best episode. Um, I like that. It's a great way of designing the head there. Uh, and also using that uh, Inaika sort of um, upper arm armor piece there as sort of the top of the head design there. A more unique way of doing it. It's cool. Very busy color scheme on this one here. The oranges, the whites, the blues. Actually works quite well. In combination there, it's definitely interesting. Always fun to see mocks that really do play with color and sort of stretch the limits of a, of a color scheme there, sort of throwing multiple colors together and just sort of seeing how it works. You know, it's like we were saying before with those more experimental tests on some of those mocks, you know. We've done all these BIS episodes on color scheme and things like that. Well, sometimes it's nice to just throw color scheme out the window and just build using whatever colors you've got and see what techniques you come up with and maybe later down the line you can replace those colors. I don't necessarily think that's what this mock is doing here, of course, but regardless, a whole bunch of different colors being used, but it looks nice. It looks cool. I like the chest design in the middle here using that uh, Ninjago kind of like, almost like a shuriken kind of piece. I don't quite know what you'd call that. Um, but it works well there as this little sort of uh, crest in the middle of the mock there. It's pretty cool. So yeah, nice work. Crazy person's cousin. Nice job. On to the next one. These are by Chunky Boy, and this mock is called Tetra, I believe. He submitted multiple things in the one email, so there's a little bit of confusion in that regard. I have people ask that. They're like, can I submit multiple things in one email? You can. I'm not going to be upset if you do. It is a bit easier if you just do multiple emails. But also bear in mind, if you do send me like 80 different things... You'll probably get one of them on the show, and then later down the line, maybe you'll get another one on the show. But I do try to prioritize people who've never been on before. So if you've had one thing been on once, you're probably going to have one thing be on once, you know? That being said, of course, I've had people who've been on multiple times. So, yeah, you know, it really is just up to what fits the episode or what I can talk about, you know? But um, play it by ear, of course. Anyway, that's completely irrelevant. This is Tetra by Chunky Boy. I like the idea that this monk has a little bit of an hourglass in their uh, their additional hands here. The idea, well, additionally too, I love the idea of um, additional hands, additional limbs. These look more sort of robotic, like they're sort of manufactured limbs. Great idea. But yeah, the hourglass there, that is not an official Lego hourglass piece. I wish Lego made an hourglass piece. That would be awesome. But no, that is not an official Lego piece. But it's really interesting. It's a unique weapon for this mock, and it kind of builds personality. If you're hearing those birds, they're being very noisy outside. I hope... Oop, oop, there it was. I don't know how busy my... Busy, how much of that my mic is picking up, but if you hear that, there are just, like, people yelling outside. Those are the birds. Australian birds. Para... L lorikeets, as they are. Where was I? Those dang birds done distracted me, and now a plane is flying over. Give me a second. While all of this goes away, and then, hopefully, peace and quiet. The second passes for you, and it was like a minute for me. Maybe you heard none of that. Maybe I just sound like a crazy man. But it was happening, I assure you. Anyway, back to this mock. Whew. Bring the focus back. I don't know if you noticed, because it took me a bit to notice, but this mock has tan and white on it. You look at the torso there in the middle, there's a bit of tan in there. I like that. Tan and white, very co you know, colors that are very close to each other. It's unique, it's interesting. Uh, it's an interesting way of kind of just adding a little bit more pop to a purely white mock. I like that. Something else, there's a few system builders that do it. Often white can get discolored. Uh, just That's just how Lego plastic works, unfortunately, especially some of the older whites. You know, maybe some of the newer ones, uh, that's not the case. But um, it's an issue you might experience with some of your white pieces. But maybe you actually want that aesthetic. Maybe like some of the Stormtroopers in The Mandalorian, you want to have that sort of more grungy, dirty white look to a mock. Um, and hey, maybe that's something you could do. Maybe actually, you know, if you've got some of those discolored white pieces, don't disregard them. Maybe actually use them to your advantage and give that sort of slightly different look because, you know, hey, it's not illegal. The parts themselves just, you know, slightly changed in color. It went from a more, you know, pure white into a slightly uh, discolored yellowish faded white. So, uh, hey, maybe you could use that to your advantage and have a more discolored look to a mock. Could work well. Anyway, I was talking about that hourglass but those dang birds done distracted me. I like how that sort of represents character on this mock. It's kind of like Two-Face with his coin, how that's sort of a little bit more uh, crucial to him. I like the fact that this mock has an hourglass, and I don't quite know what that represents, but it's just interesting. It just sort of uh, brings something new to this mock. It's cool. So nicely done. Last one here. Probably a bit of a longer episode today, but I always like to do 10 fan submitted mocks, each fan submitted mocks episode, and this one is by Aiden Builds, and it's called Sheep Slayer. There's a quote here. Feeding only on sheep by devouring whole, they are hated by shepherds. Fair enough. 
So like, this is just a build that uh, really heavily focuses on some of those Karapa armor pieces. One of the awesome Baraki sets that had a color in it that only existed on that character and appeared in nothing else. <laughs> but you got a nice selection of those pieces in that set. Uh, and like we see here, it's pretty easy to just whip them into something small or something large and uh, really make them shine. They're just some great pieces to play with. And they have this beautiful yellow, but also slight sort of trans black or black look to them. So you can very easily have it flow into some other colors. Like we see here, it flows beautifully into the black. Uh, and this mock has this beautiful sort of like half bee with a little stinger, but also half bat look to it with those wings. And hey, seeing a few more Viking wing pieces, but this time in black, and they work just as well in this mock as they did on the other one we saw. I've had so many beautiful transitions between mocks today, I didn't even plan that. It's lovely. Good job, episode 150. You did well. Uh, I also love the eyes on this. The fact that he's used those horns as both teeth and eyes. There's some interesting unity, just using the same piece throughout and having things kind of tied together nicely there. Oh, now there's a cricket. Maybe that's been going on for ages, but I only just heard it. Maybe you can hear that cricket in the background. This is, uh, these are our special guests today. We have the Australian wildlife and fauna in the background today. Uh, they weren't invited, but they're on. So there you go. <laughs> Hopefully my mic isn't picking that up. I'll, I'll know after I finish recording here, but um, special guests today. Welcome. Anyway, Aiden, great job. Small, cute little build here, but very well designed. Great use of some of those pieces. Nicely done. That's it for this episode of the Bionicle Inspiration series on fan submitted mocks. And it's episode 150. Thanks again for getting me to this point and for watching everything, or even if you only watched a few or you're brand new to the show. Welcome. There'll be many more to come still. If you liked this episode, you want to leave your thoughts, you can do so not in the comments below, unfortunately, like I said, but you can do so through any of my social media. The links to that are in the description. So whether that's Discord, uh, Instagram, Flickr, Facebook, shoot me a message there. Let me know what you thought. Always happy to hear your critique, thoughts, feelings, anything like that. Or maybe you just have a question. Reach out to me. I will most likely answer if I'm not too busy. Additionally, check the links in the description to the mocks you saw in today's episode. See some of the other stuff those guys have built. Give them a follow, give them a like, give them some love because they're some good people and they deserve it. Not everyone will have links to their mocks though because it's a fan submitted mocks episode. Not everyone actually has social media, but there's some there. You can check that out. Also, if you want to submit mocks to the show, so episode 160 for that fan submitted mocks episode or just any other episode that I might include it in, you can do so through the email you're currently seeing on your screen. It's also in the description below. So if you want to copy and paste it, you can do so there. Uh, just submit me any amount of pictures or information you want to in an email. Send it over. It'll be added to the list. And then one day when I have something to talk about with it or it fits a theme or an episode or it's the next Fans Admitted Mocks episode, it'll be in that episode most likely. But I've got a lot of, work, a lot of uh, submissions to work through. So, of course, your patience is key. Anyway, that's it. Thanks again. See you in the next one. Happy building. Bye for now.